Good morning! I'm Angelo Castro the third. I'm Angela and we are the Castro. Happy, happy Friday sa lahat ng mga kabrunchies natin. Of course. of course, it's the last day of the week and we are joined by uh, our uh, ever loyal partner. Yes, ang ating, uh, ano ba to? Friday comfort food. <laughs> yeah, Buddha's Belly. Buddha's Belly. Favorite namin na uh, hakao and of course itong isa yung Bucci. ano, Bucci. And we have uh, this is spare ribs ata eh. Mm -hmm. And then we have chop soy and fried egg fried rice. Mm -hmm. Oo. Oh, oh. Uy, kaya yung tayong... mga ano natin suki, mga viewers natin. Ano kaya ang oh, brunch niyo? Ano brunch? Oy, gusto namin magtanong ha, maulan ba sa inyo kasi dito sa Mandalo yung maulan. Mm -hmm. It's a makulimlim na Friday. Maulan, marami tayong pagkain at marami tayong pag-uusapan na balita. Sarap Sports, matu. politics, Actually, ano eh, yung sinab... education. Maulan ano at maraming pagkain, masarap na matulog. Economy. Masarap matulog eh. Ikaw Kibuloy. na lang. Tulog na lang ako. Kibuloy. <laughs> Una, hulaan nyo na lang po kung ano yung magiging number one natin today. Okay, we're serving you news in a countdown. All that before your second cup of coffee. This is Brunch. Switching to the 8th spot is a polarizing proposal from the Senate. They are pushing to make fewer holidays to improve the productivity of employees and companies in the country. Senate President Chisa Scudero said too much holidays result in companies and workers being less competitive. He noted that we have different kinds of holidays ranging from religious holidays to local and national levels of holidays. Escudero already directed the Senate to study the possibility of emulating the USA's President's Day in which the government allotted a single holiday for all former chief executives. Actually, matagal na ako pinag-uusapan yan eh. Diba? Yung, uh, baka daw po pwede actually yung mga, uh, siyempre mga employers gusto nila yan because mas mababawasan yung bayad nila. But uh, tayo, ang Pilipinas, we have relatively higher number talaga when it comes to holidays. Yeah, but you have to remember, di ba, uh, while less working days, kada na lang productivity nawawala. But you have to remember kasi, number one, it is proven na uh, pag well-rested ang isang empleyado, pag happy siya at nakasama niya yung uh, family niya lagi, maganda ang result ng trabaho. Number two, holiday economics, si PGMA, who is a known economist. Mm -hmm. Di ba, you are sharing the wealth. In other words, from uh, industry, from IT, from call centers, pag nag-holiday ka, shift mo yung income, pahingahin mo yung big corporations. Yan ang nangyayari. You're shifting the income ngayon to the smaller businesses. Kasi you have to remember, SM, yung mga small to medium yes. enterprises, these are the ones who owns the hotels, mm -hmm. uh, yung mga restaurants sa provinces, di ba? Mm -hmm. Yung mga souvenir shops, yung mga beach resorts. These are the medium enterprises usually that are family owned. Pag nang declare ka ng holiday, tsaka sila kumikita. Yes. Oo. Oo. Kaya nga, di ba, eh, sa atin, ang mga holidays sa atin, as compared sa ibang bansa, ma marami talaga. As I've said earlier, we have historical and cultural significance, may yeah. religious, may labor rights, may, may tourism, may... Pag-aralan na lang nila yung ano, pag nag-alanganin yung holiday. Oh, pag iniipit sa weekend. Pero ano. yun nga, sabi ko, di ba, noon pa itong pinag-uusapan and actually yung mga employers are actually looking into it on a positive yeah. note. But... To get, to get more <laughs> insights about this, we have ng Kaisa Labor Coalition Chairman Attorney Sunny Matula. Good morning, Attorney. Thanks for joining Hi, us. Uh, good morning. Good morning, Angela, at uh, good morning, Chico. At ah. syempre, sa inyong mga libulikong tagapakinig. Opo, uh, syempre, pukukunin po namin yung reaksyon nyo dito po sa sinasabi, sinasabi po ng Senate, yung consideration po nila ng mas konting holidays. Ah, okay. Uh, syempre, ang mga manggagawa ay, <laughs> ay kung tatanungin mo, ay mas uh, okay sa kanila na Marami ang holidays para makapagpahinga kasi very stressful talaga ang trabaho sa kasalukuyan. Right. At siyempre naman, yung mga holiday na ginagawa ay may mga historical perspective yan at mm -hmm. may mga dahilan. Hindi lang naman basta-basta na ginagawa yan para magpahinga. No? Mm -hmm. Yes, attorney, gusto ko matanong no, para maintindihan namin sa, at least sa mga manggagawa natin. Ano ba ang benefits o pros and cons no, kung baga, sa mga pagkakaroon ng holiday or kung tanggalan ng holiday, ano epekto nito? Uh, sa, sa una, siyempre, uh, gusto ng manggagawa na may pahinga. Kung holiday kasi ay Usually, kung national holiday yan, eh, may bayad yung mga manggagawa. No? Mm -hmm. So, at least nakapahinga sila, may bayad pa. Paid leave, at, parang uh, paid leave. Pangalawa, 
Oho, oho. Pangalawa, siyempre, ay may mga kahulugan ang bawat uh, holiday na sinisilibrate. So may historical uh, background yan. At siyempre, dapat ma-inculcate sa ating mga mamamayan yung kasaysayan mm. yan na uh, hinubog noon. At uh, naging resulta, alimbawa, yung uh, ating Independence Day ay dapat uh, ma-recognize ng lahat ng mga mamamayang Pilipino mm. na yun po ay ginawa ng mga bayani natin noon at dapat sundan natin ang kanilang mga yakap na sa buhay na ito ay siyempre hindi lamang ang sariling interes ang ating titing na kundi din ang pangkalahatang kapakanan. So may kahulugan yan. Mm -hmm. At uh, siyempre yung pang ano, yung uh, sinahati ni kasamang Diego na siyempre pag holiday ay may mga pinagkikitaan yung ating mga kababayan. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, maraming uh, nasa labas ng trabaho siyempre ay, ay nasa labas nila gagastos yan. Alimbawa kung pupunta sa mga sa mga beach no o hmm. mga ano bang mga recreation center kaya kumikita talaga ako kumikita diyan yung ating yung ating economy right. at kung po naman sa productivity talaga ako mas productive ang mga gawa kung uh, may pahinga siya sa napaka-stressful na mga trabaho kasi po ang pinapoint na po nila dito, particularly sa Senate, na de-disrupt nga daw po yung regular working schedule, which is bad for the economy. And, uh, kung kung nakalatag naman yan na uh, mahapang mm -hmm. panahon na, eh, napaplanong na ba dyan? So talaga ko naman ay hindi yun ang uh, impact ng mga holiday. Kasi nakaplanong naman yan buong mm -hmm. uh, taong nakalatag. Mm -hmm. Ano po po ang ano, uh, attorney yung pwede pa pong gawin para ma-improve pa po natin yung pagiging productive at of course yung competitiveness ng mga company and as well as of course yung mga empleyado? Palagay ko ang, ang mga manggagawang Pilipino generally ay very productive kaya nga uh, yung sa National Productivity Commission report ay tumataas ang... Uh, ang uh, productivity ng mga manggagawa sa balit yung kanilang kita ay hindi hindi nakahapon. Mm. Uh, kaya palagay ko naman ay isa din de facto dyan yung uh, pagmamanage ng mga tao. Kung maganda naman ang uh, pagpapatakbo ng kumpanya, palagay ko naman ay mas lalong maging productive ang mga manggagawa. Kumbaga, so, hindi yan nakadepende sa holiday. Kung bagay, attorney, sinasabi nyo kung uh, well-paid naman ang isang uh, employee natin, maganda ang benefits at walang kagutuman at problema sa gastos iniisip, na concentrate siya sa pagtatrabaho. Tama po, kasama ng Gigo. At siyempre, kung ating titingnan sa, sa Europa, mas ma, mas uh, shorter na nga yung hours of work nila. Yes, yes. Uh, instead na eight hours ay anin na utos na lamang. Ano? At marami sila na ito uh, na na ini-enjoy ang mga manggagawa. Ang karamihan ay mungkunta pa rin sa Pilipinas dahil napakahaba ang kanilang animals. I'd like to ask also, attorney, ano yung impact po ng uh, traffic at transportation sa ating manggagawa? Kasi minsan pag masyadong traffic at mahirap po sumakay or mag-commute, eh, napapagod din naman manggagawa natin. Do you think may impact pa ito? If we improve this, baka mas maging productive pa? Tama ka kasama ang Diego. At uh, syempre, yung uh, lalong-lalo na sa Metro Manila, na dapat kami ta dapat tututukan ng uh, mga mambabatas paano kabigyan ng kalutasan yung halos dalawang oras tapos dalawang oras ulit pagbalik apat na oras din yan ano? yes, uh, kung uh, matugunan natin ang uh, pangailangan mass transportation palagay ko ang napaka-importante dyan at sa mass transportation siyempre yung mga train yung mga LRT mm -hmm. sana ay pabilisin ng gobyerno ang mga project ang mga proyekto niyan at nakadagdag din yan ang trabaho yung mga infrastructure That's projects right. ng ating gobyerno siguro yun ang pabilisin so attorney in essence you don't welcome itong uh, proposal ng Senate na bawasan ng holidays dito sa Pilipinas? O, oh, initially, ngayong umaga, eh, nagtatanong ako sa mga kasama, eh, lukuan sila, at ang iba naman ay opposed talaga dyan sa proposal na yan na uh, wala masyadong impact o significant sa productivity o sa, sa buhay ng mga manggagawa. Opo. Uh, let's at say for... napabawasan pa nga ang oh. napabawasan pa kung i-reduce kung i ito. 
Opo, opo. Pero uh, let's say hypothetically, ito po ay naipropose at umusad yung itong uh, uh, gusto nilang gawin na bawasan ng holiday dito sa Pilipinas. Ano po ba ang uh, gagawin ng inyong uh, samahan ng uh, nagkaisa ng labor uh, coalition? Asa ka sa lukuyan, eh, kasi collective leadership ito ba yung nagkaisa ng labor coalition? Ako hmm. ay uh, presidente ng Federation of Free Workers. Isa lamang ako doon sa... higit na 40 ng mga union o mga federasyon na nasa nagkaisa ng labor coalition. Talagay ko pag-usapan namin yan. Pero siguro kung may mga hearing na sa Senado o sa Kongreso, ay magpapalabas kami ng aming collective statement o yung aming position paper. Alright, uh, on that note, maraming salamat po sa inyong oras. Uh, that was nagkaisa labor coalition chairman, attorney Sunny Matula. Salamat. Let's move on. For only 5 pesos, you may access the internet via Wi-Fi vendor machines. This is becoming a popular business among residents in Tawi-Tawi. Para bigyan ng mukha ang Balita Mobile Journal, Francis Orsho. Vendor machine na hindi kape, kundi Wi-Fi ang offer. Uso yan dito sa Tawi-Tawi. Sa halagang 5 pesos lang, makakakonek ka na sa Wi-Fi. Sa panahon ng modernong teknolohiya, malaking bagay ang makakonek sa internet para mag-research, makapag-social media at lalo na para sa komunikasyon. Pero kung sa pinakadulo ng Pilipinas ka mapapadpad sa tawi-tawi, siguradong challenging na ma-achieve yan. Pahirapan kasing makahanap ng signal. Kaya ang diskarte ng mga residente ng Bonggao, Tawi-Tawi ay ang kumonek sa Wi-Fi through Vendo Machine tulad ng Wi-Fi Vendo ni Kuya Marlon. Kaya marami ang mga piso wifi dito sa Tawi-Tawi dahil ay mga signal mahina. Kami rin, para mayroon kayong business county, nagbili rin kami ng ganito. Ang internet sa Wi-Fi Vendo ay mula sa satellite internet service. Mura lang din makakonek sa kanilang Wi-Fi. Ang limang pisong bariya sa bulsa mo, makaka-avail na ng one-hour internet access. Yung internet namin, hindi na, hindi na kami mag maghanap ng kung mayroon emergency mga tao galing sa mga anak namin sa Manila. Na hindi na kami nahihirapan, meron na kami communication. Isa lang si Kuya Marlon sa may mga ganitong negosyo sa isla ng Bonggao. Bukod sa napapakinabangan nila ang satellite internet, karaniwang kumikita pa sila ng hanggang 200 pesos sa isang buong araw. Kaya kung kasama sa bucket list mo ang makapasyal sa tawi-tawi, no need to worry para makapag-post sa social media. Saan ka man kasi pumunta, sagot ka ng wifi vendo nila. Mobile journalist Francis Orjopo, Hatid ang mukha ng balita. Ba, nakakadalawang I like that, story. Huh? Nakakadalawang story na ito si Francis Osho dyan sa Tawi-Tawi. Kahapon, I like yung that. gas naman oh. na by, by the bottle yung pagbili. Oh. Ngayon, wifi. Ano yung kapon? Yung uh, gas, gas na ah, yeah, yeah, by yeah, yeah, the yeah. bottle. I like that idea sa oh, mga nahihirapan, yung vendo wifi. Eh, dito oh. sa Pilipinas, sikat naman talaga tayo sa mga tingi-tingi eh. Di ba, we have tingi oil, we have tingi shampoo, we have tingi, uh, ano ba yun, yung mga panghugas ng plates, we have tingi sabon. Oh, oh, okay. Ngayon, we have tingi wifi. <laughs> oh, sana na lang tingi gasolina. <laughs> Doon sa kanila, meron by the bottle. By the, oh, <laughs> pero okay yan ha, yung tingi wifi. It's because... Uh, Most uh, major users kasi sa area na yan, hindi daw umaabot yung signal. Even yung, top, yung mga top 2, 3 natin meron, mm -hmm. pero very sporadic to different parts of the island. So by doing that, eh, may, may informal economy, may extra income. Samantalang dito, yung iba, nagpapakasasa sa... Pero ito ha, nakarinig ko itong generation ha. Wala na daw problema ang mga kababayan natin sa tawit tawi mag-post. <laughs> So nakikita mo ang, ang, nila ang primary mag concern nila ba't gusto nila mag-wifi para makapag-social media. media. <laughs> Hindi yung productive na Kasi email and ano. Ko, diba? That's their way of connecting to uh, the world as well. Parang tayo, ganun din naman. Kasi malayo But, sila. I am, they feel, so, hindi lang sa tawi-tawi, di ba? Pag somebody na hindi makapag-post o makakita sa social media, they feel disconnected na right. Ano ba to, balita ngayon? Oh, ano ba But just goes to show you lang how uh, far along we've come. Kasi I'm 48 years, so, so, uh, years old. Kailan lang naman nag-uso yung mga smartphones at yung interconnection uh, na ganyan. Uh, 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 I've never felt disconnected sa buhay that's ko. That's why the, yung generation na, yung generation mo, generation namin, parang somehow blessed because we've experienced both. 
Oh, diba? oh, kasi, During our time, may internet na, pero it's not that accessible. Actually, it's... Alam mo yung dial, din na dial. <laughs> actually, it's harder for my generation, gen, mga Gen X, because kami, in order to have a certain degree of intelligence, we had to read a lot of books. Ko, and then, it, no, no, I'm, I'm saying, and if we share, <laughs> kunyari, insights sa ibang tao, they will, wow, thank you, di ba? Yeah, oh, ngayon... Oh. Sige nga, tama ba yung sinabi mo? Ngayon, if I start to share insights with other people, sabihin, oh, kailan mo na-Google yan? <laughs> di ba? Parang, excuse me, pinag-iraapok ko yan. Or even, ano nila, check nila kung tama ba yung sinasabi. Sabi, diba? Tama naman, di ba? Kilala mo ko sino ka. Oo, di ba? Mm. Alright. Pero mas maganda, di ba? Mas ma-develop yung area na yun, mas mabigyan sila ng pagkakataon na hindi na sila maging yung parang tingi-tingi. Di ba? Mm. Mas maganda pag gano'n. Alright, uh, coming up. Former PDEA agent Jonathan Morales was found guilty of perjury for giving false testimony in a drug case. And assets and bank accounts of Pastor Apollo Kibuloy have been frozen as he continues to evade arrest. Asan ka? <laughs> Apollo, <laughs> Apollo, 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 oh, Kibuloy, 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 where but, are you? But we are just getting started, mga kapatid. More of our top 10 news when brunch returns. Keep it here on One News. <laughs> still watching brunch here on One News. Siyempre, happy Friday po. And of course, And thank you so much sa Budas Belly para po sa ating uh, very uh, delicious And good morning uh, sa lahat ng mga viewers sumptuous, natin. Sumptuous, ano to, brunch. Na, oo, nainggit daw sila. Gusto nila kumain. Yes. Oh, you have Gary Field, Sam Pokemon Go, The Usual Suspects, si Vlad, nandyan. Oo, uh -oh. si Oscar N, Mark Santiago, si Ronald Maxte. Ralph Domingo. Si uh, Tita Daisy and Tito Naldi Cancho. We have Ralph Domingo. Sarap daw ngayon ng ano natin, ng hakaw <laughs> sa brunch. Si uh, Migs Ebron. Uh, nanonood din sa atin si Sam Pokemon Go at saka si Alex Fuente, si Gary Field. Diba? Binatin ko na yun. Binatin mo na ba? Mm, oh. Ito ko lang eh, pangalawa. <laughs> Ulitin. <laughs> Oo. Oh, oh. uh, right. Okay, let's move on. Coming in at top 7, the Agriculture Department says foregone income of fishermen affected by oil spill is now at 78.7 million pesos. According to the DA, about 28,000 fishermen in Metro Manila, Central Luzon, and Calabarzon have been affected. 
fishing has been banned in Limay, Bataan, while Cavite declared a no-catch zone on all shellfish products. The Philippine Coast Guard earlier said that the oil spill from three sunken ships in Bataan is now under control. Actually, uh, they're eyeing to file a class suit. Yan ang yes, uh, oh, oh, I heard. Uh, DOJ Secretary oh. Boying Rimulia dahil nga daw, we're not talking about an accident here, but a crime. Yes, a crime. Which, uh, That's yun true. kasi nabi natin, affected uh, 25,000 and could be more, di ba, nung sa mga uh, pag baka lumawak nga yung oil spill na yan. So, they're looking at the crime against, you know, committed against our people and of course the environment. Dapat may some sort of ano yan eh, yung repentance pay yan aside from yung insurance, no? Mm -hmm. Because uh, a company tried to make money uh, tapos mm -hmm. without taking the necessary uh, precautionary measures which affected a lot of people. Diba? Usually kasi if you're in that business of shipping, may first of all, uh, kailangan yung boat mo is seaworthy. Totoo. Second, kailangan updated ka sa mga patterns ng weather. Mm -hmm. diba? And di ba, dito sa initial investigation nila, ang sinisisi nga nila, weather. Kaya weather. Ito, nagkaroon ng sunod-sunod na... Well, we understand, uh, sinabi nila, when they left port, uh, maganda yung weather. And then when they went to another area, ng iba doon. But usually, may mga patterns na nakikita. Oh, uh, di ba, kasi may update sa ng pag-asa eh. Di ba? Mm -hmm. So you could make a calculated uh, decision. Oy, may possibility na may karon ng... Uh, unstable weather sa area na yan, baka wag muna tayo pumunta. Mm -mm. Oh. Ito, ang nakakatawa naman, ano yun nakakatawa? Ang nakakatawa, nakakatawa, rather, oh. yun, ano, dito sa, ano, uh, ginawa ng mga tao dito, mostly yung mga tatlong, ano, tatlong uh, daang residente dyan sa, saan ba, sa may bataan, mm. ay, sorry ah, at uh, saka sa barangay, yung mga 19 chairman, nagpaka nagpakalbo sila. Ah, oh, oh. Para to help, di ba yun yung unang ano, uh, panawagan? Yes, that's needed to, uh, together with the coconut husks, oh, oh, para maging oh, oh. ano. Mas ma-absorb yung yes. mga oil spill at saka para hindi na lumawak. So, yun, mga nag-volunteer sila, 19 chairman sa katatlong daang residente, nagpakalbo para to help nga, to control this, uh, ano, uh, oil spill. Sorry, as much as I'd like, like to help, eh, Naglalaban ako para makip yung hair ko. Eh. Marami naman sa le. Oh, marami salamat sa <laughs> Pero importante. Marami yung... salamat sa Svensson for helping me pala. <laughs> Bakit may pa-plug ka dyan? Oh. Pero yun nga, uh, dapat abangan natin yung magiging class action na suit dito sa mga... Dapat kasi... Together na, with the oh, DOJ. Oh, Hold ah? accountable yeah. yung dapat na managot dito sa insidente na ito. Alright, let's continue with our countdown. Stopping at the sixth spot is the graduation rate in the country. Lawmakers discovered that only 6 out of 10 college students in the country have graduated. In the budget hearing of the Commission on Higher Education, or CHED, lawmakers noted that only 41% of college students finished their studies in 2023. This is already an improvement from 38.95% in 2022. Lawmakers were puzzled with the data since we have laws that give access to low-income households like free tuition law and tertiary education subsidy. Chad Chairman Popo Rivera said that tertiary education sector is still experiencing the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. I want to know because I'm seeing that the highest is at the third year. You know, pita ka nakakalungkot kasi isang taon na lang, ba? So I want to see if it's the same everywhere else. But Madam Chair, the increase in the cohort attrition rate, most of it is really COVID-related. At saka yung nakikita din nilang isa pang uh, problema dyan na dapat nila. Ito, madali, madali, for me, madali yung uh, gawa ng paraan. Mm -hmm. Is yung uh, supposedly yung subsidy na binibigay sa estudyante, nalilate yung pagbigay. So yung mga estudyante, yung magulang nila, nagpapaluwal lang muna, i-reimburse na lang. E nangyayari daw, late yung naibibigay, pati yung reimbursement nila wala. So in essence, uh, yun mo, yung chain effect na, di ba? Na hindi na nila, ay hindi na lang ako mag-aaral kasi wala kami pang abono. Oo, sabihin eh. nila na, oo, mag uh, nagtataka sila bakit medyo mataas pa rin, kahit nag-improve. Uh, kahit ang daming subsidy, well, first hand, the witness natin yan sa DSWD, nandun ka ata for a report or something nun, mm -hmm. uh, nakikita mo na a student has to go back to the DSWD to get assistance multiple times. Mm -hmm. Diba? Back and forth. And that ex entails a lot of, assist, uh, a lot of uh, expenses. So sometimes, mm -hmm. ang isang estudyante, ayaw na lang ng 
bumalik or humingi ng subsidy lang hirap ng tagal, ng, tagal oh. ng hirap ng biyahe. Pero, eh. Oo, kasi yung iba naman yung sinasabi nila, yung iba ginagamit sa iba yung pambayad din ng tuition, di ba? Sometimes hindi naman yun intent, di ba? I have the money, intent. pero nagutong bigla yung pamilya. Talagang oh, oh. magagamit. Pero yun nga, iba. dapat gawa nila ng paraan yung proseso para mabilis na maibigay dun sa uh, estudyante, maibayad sa school or diretsyo na. Yes. Di ba? Alright, let's uh, move on na. Moving over now to our top five, Comelec Chairman George Garcia bears his suspicions on the origin of alleged fake deposits. Garcia says uh, Leo Consulting made the deposits into his perpetrated offshore bank accounts in the Cayman Islands. It is allegedly owned by a certain Jose Herrera, director of a firm that shares an address with the Smartmatic Services. Smartmatic was disqualified by the Comelec in November 2023 from participating in the bidding for future elections. Just today, a federal grand jury in the U.S. announced the uh, indictment of former Comelec Chairman Andy Bautista and three Smartmatic officials. Bautista allegedly received a bribe money from executives of the election provider who were also said to be involved in money laundering scheme. Let's talk more about the issues surrounding Comelec. We have with us on the line Chairman George Garcia. Good morning, Chairman. Thanks for joining us today. Good morning, Ma'am Angela at uh, Sir Diego. Good morning to all the televiewers. Of course, uh, Chairman, yung uh, gusto namin malaman yung reaction po ninyo dito sa indictment, uh, indictment ni uh, ex-Chairman Bautista uh, at saka po kasama yung mga ilang uh, Smartmatic executives. Ang akin pong masasabi, Ma'am uh, Angela, sa mga kababayan natin, sa kasalukuyan, let's exercise presumption of innocence mm -hmm. uh, until proven guilty beyond reasonable doubt. Alam nyo, mas maganda po yung ganon. Hindi pa naman po final ang conviction, wala pa namang conviction na nangyayari. And therefore, pinakailangan ang korte ang maglilitis ng kaso na yan. Mm -hmm. uh, sa part naman po ng COMELEC, parang vindicated kami sapagkat siyempre dinisqualify po namin yung company yes. base sa aming mga pagkakaalam tungkol sa mga bagay na binabanggit po na USDOJ. At dahil po yan ay uh, mismo uh, pinayagan na ng grand jury mismo ng uh, Amerika, eh, ibig sabihin po talaga may basihan naman pala yung pagkakadisqualify namin sa kumpanya. Uh, uh, Chairman George, no, you, do you think po na yung Smartmatic din ang uh, nasa likod ng uh, offshore bank account issue na pinupukol po sa inyo? Sir Diego, ayaw kong sabihin na dere. Pero ang sinasabi ko po, gusto kong magkaroon ng kasagutan yung katanungan ko kahapon. Mm -hmm. Bakit iisa lang ang address ng lahat ng mga kumpanya, yung nagdeposito, maaari sila rin na may ari ng accounts eh. Mm -hmm. At pagkatapos yung mismong... Uh, yung mga yung yung po mga connection ay isa po lahat eh, na address so alam niyo po kahit sa atin dito sa Pilipinas pag iisa lahat ang tirahan niyo eh mukha namang related kayo lahat yes oo mm -hmm. eh chairman George I'd like to clarify lang no kasi ang dami rin ng tatanong na uh, sa social media kung bakit po uh, specifically ikaw po ang uh, pinupun uh, pun puntirya sa issue na ito uh, na ang dami dami naman uh, na mga commissioner din sa COMELEC Siyempre po, dahil ang pinuno mismo ng ahensya, uh, kapag pinukul mo, buong ahensya ang masasaktan. Noong una, kung natatandaan natin, Sir Diego, Ma'am Angela, ang sabi, isang opisyal ng COMELEC. Isipin niyo po, yes, yes. para po yun eh, ano, shotgun approach. Lahat kami, mababato ng putik. Eh, so ang ginawa ko po, sa mismong araw na yon na binanggit yung bagay na yan, sinabi ko, ako yon Ako yung pinagbibintangan, huwag na tayo magpaikot-ikot pa. Oh, so, sa... yan po ang kadahilanan kung bakit ako ang pinupukol. At alam niyo po, nakakalungkot sa uh, Ma'am Angela at San Diego, lahat po ng accounts fake, yung lahat ng local accounts fake, yung, yung lahat ng accounts sa Korea, nag-issue ng certification ng Korea, fake. At pagkatapos yung sa Cayman Island, fake din po, sabi po mismo ng dalawang bangko. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, uh, Chairman, ano, nag, kayo rin po ay nagpakita nitong mga ilang uh, proof uh, debunking these allegations. Uh, can you tell us more about it? Ma'am Angela, una, ako po hindi pa nakakapunta, nakakatuntong, kahit tuko ng daliri ng pa ako, nakakatapa sa United States, sa Amerika. Wala pa po ako nakapunta ang teritoryo o estado ng Amerika. Kahit po sa Cayman, uh, hindi pa po ako nakakapunta. Hindi ko nga po alam kung saan yung Cayman na yan. Mm -hmm. uh, so, napa, ang sabi po ng dalawang bangko, lalo na sa Cayman, para makapagbukas ka ng account sa kanila, kinakailangan ikaw ay personally present 
Mm-hmm. So, paano po ako nakapagbukas kung hindi pa ako nakakapunta doon sa mga bangko, sa mga bansang yon Lalo na po sa Amerika. Napakahigpit ang Amerika sa kanilang banking laws at uh, dahil sa kanilang karanasan noong 9-11, kaya meron silang Patriot Act na tinatawag. Mm-hmm. At uh, alam niyo po, uh, ang, ang uh, nakakalungkot po dito, pati po properties, binintangan ako na may mga properties abroad. Eh, pinuntahan po lahat ng mga kasamahan ko sa komisyon, mm-hmm. ang Hong Kong at saka ang Singapore, ay hindi po nag exist yung mga properties na yan. Yung po local banks, anin na local banks, lahat po yun nagsabi, peke ang account at hindi po makatotohanan. At wala pong ganun pangalan sa kanila pong uh, mga banko. Uh, ano po ba ang plano po natin uh, para po dito sa issue na ito? Ako po, lahat ng mga bagay na yan ay akin pong naisulat sa National Bureau of Investigation sa ating Anti-Money Laundering mm-hmm. Council. Pinapabayaan ko pong sila ay makapag-investiga ng malawakan. Um, natulungan ko naman po kahit paano na mga pagsisimula ng investigasyon. Aasa po ako sa mga resulta ng kanilang investigasyon. Bagamat may mga nagsasabi mga grupo na sila ay magpa-file ng mga kaso laban doon sa mga nag-aako sa akin, laban doon sa mga nameke ng mga dokumento, hindi ko po sila pipigilan sapagkat siya naman po ay kanilang karapatan. Ang sa akin lamang po, importante, maprotektahan ang komisyon at all costs. Hindi na baling mag-uwis ng buhay. Mm-hmm. Alang-alang lamang sa para sa bayan at para ang komisyon ay laging pinagkakatiwalaan ng sambayanan. Ay speaking of uh, chairman, uh, no, uh, I'd like to take this opportunity na rin po. Sabi niyo you have to protect the commission at all times at we all know po na approaching na yung midterm elections and very busy ang COMELEC sa preparations. Now how are these issues affecting po ha uh, paano po nagtatrabaho ang COMELEC in preparation kasi you're going to be busy also back and forth trying to prove your innocence po at hinahabol niyo po yung nag, uh, gumagawa nitong mga issue. Sir Diego, doon po, last malalo po, naging matibay ang samahan sa Comelec. Nakita at pinakita po namin na kami iisa at nagsasama-sama. Lalo po ngayon, napakataas ng moral ng buong komisyon dahil napatunayan namin ang lahat ng ito ay pagbabato ng putik, paninira ng pangalan, puri at karangalan. At uh, dahil po dyan, napagkasunduan namin lahat, trabaho lang po tayo. Kinakailangan wala ang ma-delay sa ating mm-hmm. preparasyon. Yung timelines natin ay dapat masunod. Dahil ang susunod na taon, Ma'am Angela Sir Diego, ay super election year. Yes. Meron po tayong national and local election ng May 12, kasabay po nito first time. Pag sa Moro, parliamentary election, at pag limang buwan pagkatapos po ay ang barangay NSK elections. Bagamat tayo po ibinabato ng ganyan, sabi ko nga po hindi nabaling ako na lang yan. Tatanggapin ko po lahat ng yan. Subalit wag lang po ang komisyon at ang aming mga proseso. Mm-hmm. Lastly, uh, Chairman, ano, sabi niyo po kayo po ay nagpaplano mag-file ng ethics complaint against sa uh, Congressman Marcoleta and he said uh, it's a free country, you can do that. Uh, your reaction on that? Uh, hihintayin ko po yung result ng NBI investigation at saka Anti-Money Laundering Council. Mm-hmm. Alam niyo po, lahat ng aking mga sinabi at lahat ng pag ko po ay pinanumpaan ko. Alam niyo po talaga dito, Ma'am Angela at saka Sir Diego, napaka-unfair ng mundo natin, ang ating banta, sapagkat tayong mga ordinary mga mamamayan, mga mga anak, mga mga mahihirap, mga anak, mga hampas lupa, wala po tayong immunity. Pagka tayo nagsalita ng mga pangalan, pwede tayong maidemanda. Subalit meron po tayong mga iilang uh, tao na kahit magsalita at mag-akusa at mag, uh, mag, magbato ng, ng um, putik sa mukha ng iba, ay hindi po pwedeng kasuhan. Ang tawag po doon, immunity. Alright, uh, thank you so much for your time. That was Comelec Chairman George Garcia. Maraming salamat po. Going to the fourth spot. Hmm. <clears throat> President Bongbong Marcos lauded the Philippine National Police for conducting, quote, humane and bloodless operations. Marcos said his administration has shown that fighting crimes and illegal drugs in a humane way can be effective. This seems to be an indirect jab at the previous Duterte administration and its bloody war on drugs campaign. The Duterte family has been criticizing the president for the past few months. Our crackdown on illegal drugs, smuggling, illegal gambling, private armed groups, human trafficking, and criminality has also strengthened significantly in the ways that are not only effective, but legal and lawful. Indeed, police operations are now conducted as humane, as truthful, and as bloodless as possible. 
Alam mo yun ang sinasabi ng experts noon pa sa panahon ni PRRD na while uh, it was appreciated that somebody was going hard on drugs, ang problem, he was taking out yung mga small fish na distributors lang. Mm -hmm. So if you take out distributors, anong nangyayari? New distributors come. Diba? Parang, yung parang yung mushroom. Parang mushroom. Hindi, oh, hindi mo talaga ina-address. Ano, ina oh, kunyari, parang tigyawat, paulit-ulit mong kinakalkal, hindi mo inaayos yung dugo mo, paulit-ulit lalabas. <laughs> Pero anyway, yan din yung sinabi na malaman eh, sa mga malaman na sinabi ni Pangulong you know what he means. Bongbong Marcos during his State of the Nation address. Nag At ngayon, inulit niya sa anniversary nga ng PSG. And he is... Uh, and you know how important and, alam and, mo na, malaman yeah. yung And this comes, kasi it's very rare that uh, PBBM has says something against somebody. Eh. Mm -hmm. uh, it, ito, alam pa rin eh, blind pa rin eh, blind, uh, kung baka parang blind item pa rin ang dating. But this comes after the statements of uh, VP Sara which she went also and criticized the government. Now, oh. sumagot si PBBM in an official speech talking about we're doing it the right way. Parang ganun ang oh. sinasabi niya eh. Oh. Abangan pa natin kasi... It's gonna get... It's uh, gonna uh, get dirty? Tama no, no, no. <laughs> I would not say dirty, but I say it's gonna get more heated. Oh. Kasi palapit ng palapit. As Chairman, uh, Chairman George said, next year is a super election year. Oh, diba? You have the, the Bangsamoro anyway. election, then you have the Barangay election, and you have yung national elections. Exactly. And speaking of elections... Now, on our top three, the political parties of President Marcos and Villars have joined the forces. The Partido Federal ng Pilipinas, which carried Marcos in his 2022 campaign, and the Villar-led Nationalista signed an alliance. This comes two months before the filing of candidacy for midterm polls. The political parties, though, have yet to disclose their official candidates. President Marcos says the forging of the alliance would help fulfill their shared goal for the Filipino people. To make sure that the leadership that will come out, that will win after the election of uh, 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 the midterm election the next year, are the leaders who understand that uh, we must put what we we must put our partisan or uh, our personal differences aside, whatever they may be. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oo, de, yun ang ano nila, di ba? Uh, Kumbaga, oldest, uh, biggest uh, party, ang uh, nationalista. Party, yeah. And uh, hindi pa set yung kanilang magiging Senate slate, pero uh, meron na tayo mga hula dyan. Of course, nakita na rin kahapon. Pero, si Camille um, Villar would be yeah. there. Uh, Amy Marcos would be there. Senator Tolentino would be pero there. Pero parang ang pinag-uusapan pa, whether as a group, uh, they would come up with a slate, a unified slate, or they'll have their own slates, pero adaptive, uh, adapted candidates ang, yang, on the each side. Diba? Mm -hmm. So we will see if they will come up with their unified slate. Yes, and this is not the first time no, no, na no. Uh, kumbaga, nagkaroon ng alliances between, kunyari, sabihin mo na mismo itong si uh, President Bongbong Marcos and the Villars. And you have to remember, nung tumakbo si uh, Manny Villar ng pagka-presidente noong 2010 kasama sa Senate slate niya si uh, 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 for, uh, President Bongbong Marcos. Tapos uh, sinuportahan din siya nung uh, tumakbo siya ng pagiging uh, presidente. Yeah. So talagang meron ng alliance before pa. Yeah. So, and, at saka yung Partido Federal ng Pilipino ay uh, meron din mga alliances with lakas CMD and other parties. So we'll see more of this uh, forging alliances kasi nga malapit na ang, uh, of course, yung October, yung filing of uh, uh, certificate of uh, candidacy. All right, Philippine inflation for July may have quickened, but Banco Central Governor Eli Remolona Jr. says price increases on food, fuel, and power may have already peaked. Is he likely to start cutting the key rate when the Monetary Board meets on August 15th? Kathy Yang caught up with Remolona on thought leaders, and this is what he had to say. At what point would you say it would be concerning enough for you to possibly make a move of a rate cut, of a key rate cut uh, by August 15th? Uh, so far, the, the output numbers have been looking good. So it hasn't been a consideration in terms of... Uh, a rate cut. Uh, inflation have, has been more of a consideration. Is inflation beginning to settle firmly within the 2 to 4 percent uh, target range? So that's the main thing. Are we comfortable enough with, with where inflation is going before we do a rate cut? 
you want to get ahead of it? You're at 4.4, but you got to get it down first to 2 to 4 percent, which is the inflation target range. Somewhat near uh, near 3 percent, so that if there's some upside uh, shocks, then we will still stay within the, the target range. What would be those upside shocks? Well, there's still uh, there's still oil. It could it could still hit us. Uh, I would say mainly oil, but there's other. Food items besides rice, they're usually a factor. Catch the full interview on August 15 at 9 p.m. Philippine Standard Time, only here on One News. Don't go away because we're not done yet. May dalawa pa tayo. Please stay, stay with, with us. us. Welcome back. You're still watching Brunch here on One News. Mm -hmm. Thank oh, you. Thank Budes you. Belly. Oh, Budes Belly. Kinakain oh. ko kasi. Oo. Oh, oh. Masarap yung hakaw kasi favorite naman. And yung egg fried rice. Oh, oh. Mamaya kakain ako after this. Tama kaya ang hula ninyo sa ating number one today? Tignan natin. Going straight to our second spot, former Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency agent Jonathan Morales was found guilty of perjury. A Pampanga court found Morales guilty of providing false testimonies against two Chinese nationals whom he said were involved in drug trafficking. However, Morales later recanted his statement and said he was only pressured by his superior, former PDEA director Lyndon Aspacio. Recall that Morales also claimed to have signed the PDEA documents indicating that President Marcos and actress Maricel Soriano were using drugs. Oh, ayan. Dun, dun yan sa ano, hindi yun dun sa PDEA leaks, ha? Dun no, sa no, no. Isang... He was charged for a separate yes, issue separate against issue two to. Chinese uh, uh, citizens, di ba? Oh. Ito yung nirikant niya. Yeah, ito yung nirikant niya. But he's the same person also who made these uh, allegations na yung pinirmahan niyang document ng PDEA na oh. wala naman operations There daw. There goes his credibility, oh. kumbaga. Dun, dun sa iba pang mga issue na sinasabi niya supposedly na ito ngayon sa PDEA leak yeah. na pinirmahan niya. Pinirmahan niya. Di ba? Uh, tapos mayroon siyang issue ngayon ng Uh, perjury. Actually, itong 11-page decision na ito ay July 30 pa, pero it was only made public yesterday mm. uh, sa San Fernando Pampanga Municipal Trial Court. Mm, okay. 
Oh, yun ang kanyang uh, kumbaga, yung update kay Jonathan Morales kasi para lang din sa context nga din sa ating mga viewers today who just uh, tuned in, mm. uh, si Jonathan Morales po yung nagsasabi na meron siyang pinirmahan na uh, dokumento na nag-implicate uh, po sa ating Pangulo, si uh, President Bongbong Marcos and Actes Mercedes Soriano at sa among PDX others, hearing ni, sa PDX hearing, hearing ni Senator Bato de la Rosa, oh. which was the turning point then for the oh, pag-aalat ng relationship. ng hearing because of the PDX. Oh, I'm saying uh, turning point ng relationship between Duterte and uh, right. Marcos doon ng sour. Oo. Oh, oh. oh. So, okay. Alright, uh, abangan natin ano ba ang ating magiging number one for today. Going back to the top spot is the fugitive pastor Apollo Kiboloy. The Court of Appeals has ordered the freezing of Kiboloy's assets and properties. Meanwhile, police authorities said the Kingdom of Jesus Christ leader is still hiding in his property in Davao City. Here's the report. The Court of Appeals has approved the freeze order filed by the Anti-Money Laundering Council or AMLAC against Kingdom of Jesus Christ or KOJC founder Pastor Apollo Kiboloy. It will affect Kiboloy's assets and properties including 10 bank accounts, 7 land titles, 5 vehicles and a aircraft. The freeze order is implemented for 20 days. The fugitive Kiboloy is currently facing charges of sexual and child abuse and qualified human trafficking. The court said they found an of evidence of Kiboloy using his assets and properties in conducting crimes such as qualified human trafficking, sexual and child abuse, and money laundering, among others. Aside from Kiboloy, 11 officials and members of KUJC were also included in the court's order. A freeze order was also implemented against KUJC's Children's Joy Foundation and Suarasug Media Corporation, which operates the TV station SMNI. SMNI's legal camp said they will file a motion to lift the order. Meanwhile, PNP Police Regional Office 11 Director Brigadier General Nicolas Torre confirmed that Kibolois is still hiding in KOJC's compound in Davao City. Still, the police is not counting out the possibility of Kibaloy flying out of the country using his private planes and helicopter. Kibaloy also allegedly has a private taxi connected to the Davao International Airport. Tore ensured that they will arrest Kibaloy in a peaceful way. Definitely, ayaw natin ng may masaktan dito, may lalo na dumanak ng dugo. Hindi natin gawin yan. Maximum tolerance, sige lang, ma hindi pa naman matatapos ang mundo, andyan lang naman siya. Eh, kaysa may masaktan, baka pwede nating magawa ito sa mas maayos na paraan. For News 5, Camille Samonte, We Are One News. Mm, may, nagsabi nga, nga, mm. may nagsabi na putulan mo ng kuryente, tanggalan mo daw ng tubig, palalabas daw yan ng kusa. Eh, mag-ano, generator na lang sila. O, oh. oh, di sarado mo yung pinto para hindi makabili ng gas para, para sa generator. <laughs> Basic human rights, sinatanggalan mo dahil hindi lang naman si Pastor Kipuloy nandoon doon sa property. There are thousands of members there. <laughs> well, if you can make earthquakes happen with the sign of uh, the sign of a hand, you know. <laughs> Pero Pwede. sinasabi nga daw nila, ito nga si, uh, si Torre, no, yung nagsalita din kanina sa Davao Chief. Eh, sabi niya, may mga napakalaki, napakalaki ng uh, property ni uh, Kibuloy, yung Kingdom of Jesus Christ, yung ano, dyan, sa, sa Davao. And uh, there, there are secret doors, tunnels, and apparently, sabi niya, involving 200 cops nung time na nagpunta sila doon nag-search, it, it, it's not enough, no? Para ma-search yung buong compound. Sabi niya, ito ang sabi niya, ha? I would just uh, uh, quote him, that's how big it is if they, yung KOJC daw, will allow them, I would bring in 1,500 people and have them stay there for a month to search for Giboloy. Pero sa akin naman, but if they allow, hindi eh, humihika na lang ng, ano, ng uh, search warrant, pwede ba yun? Hindi naman ako lawyer sa, sa korte, Diba? Para, para ma, ma, magkaroon kayo ng legal way to search the, the property. Kasi kung ang sinasabi naman niya, uh, mga informants niya, nakikita daw at nandun lang naman daw talaga si uh, Pastor Apollo Kibuloy sa, sa property. Hmm, pero ba't ano yun, as a lawyer of SMNI? Alin? But, uh, di ba may nag-statement ang lawyer? Ah, alin? Parang flash of screen natin. Na, ah, hindi ko nakita. Ayan, ito, 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 ito. As, As a lawyer of SMNI, we respect the decision of the court, but we will file a motion to lift that order to the court or file a TRO to the SC. Di ba kasi uh, SMNI was maintaining that uh, Kibuloy uh, is not 
directly involved anymore with operations sa SMNI. So that's why I was wondering lang mm -hmm. ba't statement ang SMNI? No, because kasama nga yung ano, sa FINRIS na ASEC, yung Suara Sa SMNI. Which, ah, okay. which Yun, owns malinaw the na. SMNI uh, franchise. So kasama yun sa mga na freeze na assets. Alam mo, ang kawawa dyan yung mga ibang employees ng SMNI kasi nandami, nandami sila. You have the cameraman, di ba? you have the script writers, yung mga other positions. Pero di ba sabi nga nila, di naman daw sumasweldo yung mga yun doon. Oh wow. Volunteers oh, well. lang yung mga yun. Oh well, ibang usapan na yun. Yun ang sabi, di ba? Yung mga ibang balita na mga nabasa. Tsaka yung na-flash natin sa screens kanina yung mga assets na freeze. I believe meron pa yan eh. Mm -hmm. I think uh, he may have prepared for this, a scenario like this. Because hindi mga kaagad na freeze yan eh, di ba? Ten bank accounts, you have seven land titles, you have five vehicles, and one helicopter. Oh. May aeroplano pa yan. Yes. Oo, oh, oh, may aeroplano pa yan. Nasa States ata yung airplane, di ba? Na hold oh. ng FBI. Yes. So, so oh. saan na sabi nga nila, they are ano, uh, planning nga daw to launch another wave of police operations to serve warrants from two courts in Davao City in Pasig against Kibuloy. So, tignan natin. Kasi nga, nung last na nagpunta sila dyan, June 10, ba? Diba? Nagkaroon ng kaguluhan because sabi nila, ang nilalaban ng mga tao doon, di sila pinapapasok yung mga PNP, mm. yung authorities because it's just a, parang sabi na warrant, hindi naman search warrant yan, mm. no? ba? Diba? Parang, kaya iniiwasan sana magkaroon ng gulo ulit at uh, ma-serve at makuli nga ito si Kibuloy. Yan yung term, iniiwasan magkagulo. Naalala mo yung ano, Ano? Agony in the garden. Mm -mm. Nagpe-pray si Jesus. Mm -mm. Tapos nung parating yung mga Praetorian soldiers yeah. para aresto yung si Jesus. Na lang siya. Yung apostles, di ba, tumayo, nag nag nagbunot ng mga sword to defend Jesus. Anong ginawa ni Jesus? Tumayo. 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 Binaba niya yung kamay ng mga naglift ng sword. Sumama. Kasi oh. ayaw niyang may masaktan eh. Mm -mm. Di ba? Mahal niya yung mga setting a good example. Sige, harapin ko yan, sabi niya. Ay, akala ko ba sa ano, ano ka? Son of God. Son of God. Ka, Appointed just... son of God. Okay. Ay, just wanna, I just want to, na baka mag-ano ako dito. <laughs> Yung ugat mo. <laughs> Again, thank you so much uh, sa Buddha's Belly for sending thank over you. the sumptuous Happy Friday and uh, to everyone. Thank yes. you for joining us. Mina Binales at ng Mina Binales. Jesse Mendes family. All right. And Jerry Young ng Chancellor. Oh, yeah, Jerry Young. Yeah, good morning. Okay. At saka, joke lang. Go ahead. Go na. Bilis. Wala lang time. <laughs> I'd like to leave a quote. Uh, gratitude makes sense of our past, brings peace for today, and creates creates a vision for tomorrow. A quote from Melody Beatty. Alright. Happy weekend! Happy weekend! And that wraps up today's episode of Brunch. Join us again uh, on Monday. I'm Angela Lagunsad Castro. And I'm Angelo Castro the third. We are One News. All sides, all the time. Happy weekend!